and the plot thickens. <laughs> it is emerging that the photographs which caused so many Kenyan sleepless nights, the photographs which caused Kenyans to lose it, get very upset. There is much more to them than meets the eye. And in all this drama and shenanigans, one thing is very clear. Yeah, what people wanted us to see in the photograph was not the reality. It is very clear that there's somebody somewhere who is very, very desperate to convince Kenyans that there's a handshake between President Ruto and Raila Amolo Odinga. Or if there isn't one, there is one loading. There is somebody so determined. And Kenyans have already bought it, hook, line and sinker. But let us now break it down. And let us start with something that will absolutely shock you. Because it shocked me. According to an expert in these things, it is quite possible that these photographs were taken by a camera zooming in from very far away. In other words, the photographs may have been taken without those in the photograph being aware that they were ever going to be photographed. You know we have absolutely amazing cameras these days. Mali technology metrificia. Yeah. Even the camera on your phone is bound to be quite sophisticated. But there are cameras that can take very clear shots from a very far away distance. And this seems to be confirmed if you look carefully at the photographs. You know there's a huge difference between a photograph taken when the subjects are aware and one that is taken when they're completely unaware. You know when you're a president, you want to look presidential all the time. Look at those photographs carefully. Number two, Raila Odinga has responded. Yeah, but his responses are conflicting. Initially, on Twitter, Raila told us that he had accepted an invitation from Uganda's president Yoweri Kaguta Museveni to discuss East African community manenos. And then just a few hours ago, Raila told us that his mission in Uganda was to campaign for the AU post he's going for. And the plan is that President Museveni is the one who is going to propose his name. Of course it is possible that he was invited to discuss East African community matters and then he took the opportunity to campaign for the AU post is after, allegedly. But one thing is clear, Raila is obviously feeling the heat <laughs> that these photographs generated yeah, by the narrative that was being sold to us which some of us, actually most of us, most people, not me included, but most of us bought it kabisa. Yeah, they bought it hook, line, and sinker. In fact, there are those who are so emotionally drained by the whole thing that even now they don't want to hear any other stories. They don't want to hear excuses. They know what happened. They know handshake is loading. They don't want stories. Yeah, they don't want to be lied to. Because they are sure they already know the truth. We have those people. Which gives absolute victory to these propaganda peddlers. Yeah. Their narrative and their objective. Well, if you take a closer look, it is rather obvious. Somebody was very desperate to sell us a narrative. Because look at all the other things which quickly followed. 
Yeah. The story about Raila allies being given state jobs. And then also, Kalonzo Musyoka <laughs> was the target of some very vicious attacks by people who are told are Raila allies. Of course, the whole objective was to completely dismantle Azimio, to completely maliza Azimio. Now, what they told Kalonzo is also super fascinating. Because they told Kalonzo they have conditions. Yeah, if he wants to be the flag bearer, or rather if he wants a chance at being the flag bearer of Azimio. And the condition that really caught my eye, and I believe the eye of many, was that one of, we want to see you leading Mandamano, like Baba. We want to see you on the forefront of demonstrations, peaceful demonstrations. <laughs> now, if truth be told, there is no single demonstration that Kalonzo Musyoka has ever attended. None. That is the truth. He avoids them. And when the press corner him, he says he's in support. But he will never be there. Kukula Tiagas. Never ever. And the truth is, this disturbs many Azimio supporters who may want to support Kalonzo Musyoka in future. Yeah. Because as far as Azimio supporters are concerned, they want Raila to be replaced one day, not immediately, but to be replaced one day by somebody as fearless as Raila Odinga. By somebody who does not fear, just like Raila Odinga. And this is why I said in an earlier video that currently in Kenya I do not see any politician who is able to step into Raila's very huge, gigantic shoes. Maybe one will emerge tomorrow. But so far, I don't see. Because it is not just Mandamano. To be another Raila, you need to be a strategist. To be another Raila, you need to understand politics. To be another Raila, you need to speak the language of the people. Now, Kalonzo Musyoka, for instance, even if you've listened to his speeches, like one very recent one at Kenyatta Market, after Edwin Sifuna addressed the people, the mic was given to Kalonzo Musyoka, and you could clearly see Kalonzo Musyoka was not communicating. Yeah? He was not speaking the people's language. And as a result, he did not have the full attention of the crowd. You know, it should be clear that Kenyans have learned some very hard lessons yeah, over the last one year or so. And as a result, I can assure you, the next president of Kenya, <laughs> he must be in touch with the people. Any slight suspicion that the president does not speak or rather the presidential candidate does not speak the language of the people will be a great disadvantage to that candidate whoever they are not necessarily Kalonzo Musyoka so that is the big problem Bwana Musyoka has to fix if he's still interested in the presidency yeah, because that one will put him down quickly anyway my apologies for digressing. What these people wanted to do was to completely finish the opposition. And they wanted to do it very simply with a handful of photographs. <laughs> very smart. Now there's something I don't want you to miss. Who was the first person to post these photographs? It was Ruto. Who was the first to bring forward this narrative? that they are discussing with Raila, that he is campaigning for Raila, etc, etc. Who was the first to bring out that narrative? It was Ruto. Now, now, now. If there was anybody who doubted that Ruto's style yeah, is propaganda narrative, 
and spinning events and developments in his favor while totally ignoring the facts. Yeah. Another word for that is lying. If there's anybody who doubted that, here is concrete evidence. But with this new information, we can now put together yeah, a possible scenario of what actually happened. Yeah, but before I do that, please allow me a moment to acknowledge our sponsors for today's show. Yeah, which is land in Kabarak, near Kabarak University. Actually, these plots, 13 acres in total, are directly opposite Kabarak University. Yeah, 500 meters from the Kabarak Mogotio Highway. And of course, you have guessed, they are very ideal for hostels. Because despite the problems that our universities are passing through right now, you can be sure university education in the future will continue to expand rapidly. And this is because there are many, many Kenyans, young Kenyan students, in schools, high schools, preparing for university education. Our universities will continue to be flooded with new students, high student populations. And therefore student hostels are a sure bet. You can see clips on your screens right now of the plots we're talking about. Absolutely beautiful. And they're ready title deeds. Now a quarter acre is going for only Kenya shillings 3 million. Yeah, when you convert that into dollars at current exchange rates, that is nothing for quite an investment in my opinion. And so if you're interested, please use the telephone number that you see on your screens right now. Make inquiries. Ask all the questions you want to ask. Yeah. And you might find that this is the ideal investment to make. I don't think I have to remind you that the best time to make an investment is not when things are booming. No. History has shown us very clearly. The best time to make an investment is when there's uncertainty. Yeah. When things are not good, when the economy is doing poorly, that's the best time to make an investment. Because you can be sure the country called Kenya will recover in the very near future. That one, I have full confidence. And of course, we're very grateful for the sponsors. And we hope that some of us on this channel will greatly benefit from this opportunity. Right. In my opinion, and based on the information that has emerged, this is what happened, okay, over this Uganda meeting, leading to photographs that have given some Kenyans a heart attack. <laughs> Everything points to a third party forcing this meeting. Okay? And this third party is of course in Ruto's corner. Make no mistake about that. And it is quite possible that when Raila went to meet Museveni, he did not know that he would meet Ruto there. That one is quite possible. But in my opinion, that detail is not even very important. It doesn't matter that much. The third party were very much aware of what they wanted. They wanted all three of them in a situation where they could be photographed. And I also believe that the third party was very determined to sort out the current tiff of a fuel between Kenya, the Kenyan government, and the Ugandan government. To be more specific, between President Yoweri Museveni and President William Samoy Ruto. And of course they achieved that objective 100%. Yeah. That problem is sorted. You can be sure of that. And poor Raila Odinga, who of course is very much aware yeah, of the consequences <laughs> of such optics coming out on social media, 
Agwambo was caught completely by surprise. And this is evidenced in his very slow response. You know, sometimes you can be so shocked that it takes you and your handlers some time <laughs> to put your thoughts together and to organize an appropriate response. Bottom line, nothing has changed. However, we need to take careful note of the contents of my explosive special report of what is happening in the background. There are very powerful forces pushing Raila towards the corner. Yeah. And these powerful forces don't seem to realize that even if Raila Odinga was to go into a handshake today with Ruto, that handshake he would be alone without his supporters. None of his supporters will join him. And so it will be a handshake of friendship between Ruto and Raila, period. It will not involve the massive support base Raila has. And anybody who has doubts about that, those doubts must have been thrown out of the window by the reaction Kenyans had towards this photograph yeah, and the possibility that Raila and Ruto were starting to talk seriously. You saw the reaction. Kenyans were livid. Kenyans <laughs> did not want to hear that story. Even now, the people are so annoyed that they will not even take in this video. How attacky your topic. Uh-uh. <laughs> Oh boy, you know, sometimes if you let emotions overtake you, it is very possible not only to make a huge mistake, but to miss everything. And especially to miss the things, the stuff, that is truly important. Please let us remember that all the time. We are humans and therefore emotions are natural. However, tafadhali, Learn how to separate your emotions yeah, and your analysis of Kenyan politics, please. Because a lot of things are going to happen going forward that are really going to work on your emotions and your anger. Yeah, a lot of things are going to happen that will really provoke Kenyans. Indeed, they're already happening. Okay? Emotions affect judgment. In fact, they completely destroy judgment. Please remember that. It's for your own good. Now, yesterday we had a very enthusiastic response yeah, over this special report I have of what is really going on in the back room of Kenyan politics. Raila and his people, former President Huru Mugai Kenyatta and his people, Ruto and his people, the third party chaps yeah, and their people and also identifying who these people really are that's all in my report highly sensitive stuff now you can see details on your screens right now please take full advantage I have very few slots left so rush grab them and make sure you don't miss because when you have this information in your hands you will totally understand even if you had been overwhelmed by emotions before, you will totally understand. And you will cool down. And you will relax. And it will not be easy to fool you again with another set of photographs tomorrow. Or with another trick, propaganda trick tomorrow. It will not be easy to fool you. Because these photographs from Uganda... <laughs> Even very seasoned political analysts that I really respect were fooled. I was just amazed. I went into Twitter and I saw what they were saying and I said, I, 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 what is happening? And I don't want to believe that these analysts have been bought to push a certain agenda. I think they were being genuine. At least the ones I have in mind. So grab this Motokuliko Pasikumi Zamaka 
special report video and get the details, the highly sensitive information. And I have to repeat myself, going forward, expect many, many more propaganda tricks because we have an administration which is increasingly desperate. Nothing is working out for them. Yeah. There was a lot of excitement over the shilling strengthening against the dollar. Where has that excitement gone? Huh? Amen, Hey. In fact, right now, it seems that we're all set for season two of the dollar strengthening considerably against our local currency. And you really don't have to be an economist. And these things are not magic. You continue to take money away from the people. No money circulating. You continue to frustrate businesses. Yeah. You continue the corruption. People are stealing like there's no tomorrow. Honestly. How do you expect the Kenyan shilling to strengthen against major currencies? How? How will that happen? You tell me. <laughs> Iki to see magic. Iki to see pinky pinky ponky. No. No. The underlying factors that must be correct. The things which must happen. Yeah. For investors to show confidence. Which is what will strengthen the Kenya shilling. Yeah, because they'll sell their dollars with confidence. Because they have something to do with the Kenya shillings they will get. Yeah, they have something to invest in. But right now, what can you invest in in Kenya? Apart from land with long term, yeah, at least medium term objectives. What else can you invest in? Can you dare start a factory? Can you dare start a new business in this environment? And have KRA people visiting you the whole day from morning till evening till you can't do any work? Huh? <laughs> Let's be serious. Anyway, until next time, this is Chris Gomekucha.